Why did a statue go from up there to down here, to in there, to here? And what can this tell us about history? Hi everyone. Today we're looking at a question that's received a lot of attention recently. What can Edward Colston's statue tell us about history? Whoa, who sounded the controversy klaxon? Oh, that's right, I did. It is a controversial topic, but one well worth talking about. And by the way, if you're looking for more content on the Industrial Revolution and the abolition of slavery, check out historybombs.com for our BAFTA award-winning history videos and teaching materials. Right, let's see if we can pull this off. I'll just be relaxing here, under the desk. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Welcome to the History Bombs car. Thank you very much for your name suggestions and for voting. And by popular demand, I can now confirm that we are going to christen the car Chris. Onwards, Chris! We're travelling to the southwest of England, to the famous harbour city of Bristol. Bristol was one of the wealthiest cities in the country, especially during the rise of the British Empire. A major factor in the city's wealth was the transatlantic slave trade. It is estimated that 500,000 Africans were taken from their homes and enslaved by Bristol traders alone. Now, it's worth saying there was always resistance to the slave trade. There were frequent rebellions by enslaved people from the 16th to the 19th centuries all across the Americas. The most famous of these uprisings was the revolution that established the country of Haiti in 1804 and drove out French imperial slave traders for good. There were also political campaigns by people who were not enslaved, which helped to change the laws on the trade and ownership of human beings. But these changes only came about after centuries of suffering and cruelty. Centuries that made white British merchants very wealthy indeed, brought new products like sugar to the British people, and created racial inequalities that continue to shape our world today. And one of those white British merchants who got very rich indeed was this guy, Edward Colston. Here he is, lying down and covered in paint in a Bristol museum. And here's where he used to be, looking down on passers-by in the centre of Bristol. On the 7th of June 2020, protesters pulled down his symbolic statue and pushed it into Bristol Harbour, drawing international attention. Colston was heavily involved in the slave trade. He played an active part in enslaving 84,000 Africans, 12,000 of whom were children, and 19,000 died en route to the Caribbean and America due to the appalling conditions on board slave ships. But for a long time, people didn't really talk about that. Instead, they spoke about places like this, a big Bristol music venue that until last year was called Colston Hall. Or this big Bristol school, which until this year was called Colston's Girls' School. Or this big avenue, which is literally called Colston Avenue. You get the idea. He had a lot of money and he left a big chunk of it to Bristol, which put his name on all kinds of buildings and charitable courses around the city. Then, in the 1890s, over 150 years after he had died, a group of Colston's admirers paid for a statue of him to be erected in the centre of Bristol. You could say that they were grateful for everything he had done for the city and wanted to celebrate that, but you could also say that by erecting a statue, they were obscuring the history of how Colston had made his money, and they were painfully unaware of what it might be like to walk past his statue every day if you were black and living in Bristol. Others might agree that the statue wasn't a great idea, but they didn't like the way it was pulled down and thrown into the harbour. They might say that the protesters who did that were trying to erase history. But pulling down statues has been a part of history across the world. Whether bringing down Saddam Hussein in Iraq, or the Spanish colonist Sebastián de Belacazar in Colombia, or the planned removal of US President Teddy Roosevelt towering over two black and Native American men, changes to public monuments happen a lot as times change sometimes through the official channels, sometimes by other means. Just over the water from here in Wales, Cardiff Council recently voted to remove a statue of Thomas Picton, a 19th century war hero who was convicted of torturing a child in the Caribbean. Changes like these are historical events in themselves. They tell us something about how people see the world and what they'd like to see done differently. At the same time, Colston has hardly been erased. He's right here. Hi, Ed. So what will the fall of Colston's statue say to future generations? Perhaps the Bristolians were frustrated by racial inequalities, inequalities created by the British Empire's treatment of black people and spotlit by the murder of George Floyd in the United States. Perhaps a desire for our public spaces to present our history as it happened, as opposed to glorifying one man who caused tremendous suffering. But I'll leave the last word to Vanessa Casule, who was Bristol's poet laureate when the statue fell. Colston. 
I can't get the sound of you from my head. Countless times I pass that plinth, its heavy threat of metal and marble. But as you landed, a piece of you fell off, broke away, and inside, nothing but air. This whole time, you were hollow. Phew, we made it. If you'd like more information on this complicated topic, I'd highly recommend the BBC documentary Statue Wars, and I've put a link to that in the video description below. You'll also find a link to Vanessa Casule's full poem, Hollow, which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much to M Shed Bristol for allowing me to film with Edward Colston's statue. You can now visit the statue for yourself in their special exhibition, and also you can vote on what you'd like to see done with the statue next. And I've put a link to all that information in the video description. We're also going to be running a poll later in the week uh, asking the same question on our YouTube channel. So you can pitch in there as well. And if you'd like more fascinating videos about the Industrial Revolution, check out historybombs.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Call this a political movement? This is a political movement. Tucson Louverture, glad you could join us.